Joining the podcast is a former Baltimore Raven, a former Alabama Crimson Tide fan favorite, former defensive lineman Terrence Cody, a.k.a. Mount Cody. What's going on, man? How are you? Oh, man, I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Good, good. So I heard, correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard you're doing a little coaching now at the high school level. Fill us in on what you're doing, what you're up to these days. Oh, uh, well, shoot, um, I moved back. Back, I moved back in Alabama uh, back in back in September, this past September, and uh, had a buddy of mine that I played with in Alabama asked me to come out and um, help him out with the team. And I came down here. Uh, I think it was week. I think it was week four, week five. I showed up, and they had actually lost like two games in a row. And then once I showed up and started helping out, they went on a win streak. And made it to the second round of the playoffs. And uh, made it to the second round of the playoffs, and they ended up losing. It was by, like, two touchdowns and stuff, but they ended up playing their butts off. And and um, I decided to, like, just stay around and stick it out. And help so it out. have you developed a passion for coaching since you've done that? Um, I've always had a passion for the game, and I think just the coaching just comes with having that passion for the game. So, yeah, I feel like I feel like I'm developing that. Well, man, I want to start this interview off with a bang. So, take me back to that field goal block against Tennessee. What was that adrenaline rush like? I mean, that was a Daniel Moore painting. I'm sure you know tons of people have that picture in their living room. It looked like Julio was about 25 feet up in the air. What do you remember about that? Oh shoot, man. I could almost remember it like it was yesterday, but um, only thing I remember, like, you know, building up to that, I just knew, you know, Tennessee was probably playing their best game of that year and stuff. And and they had, I mean, they had us dialed up on, you know, on, on um, they were shutting our offense down. We couldn't do anything. and But just building up to that, they made a play, scored a touchdown, and, they got the ball back on the uh, onside kick, and they made a they made a few plays down the field to get in the field goal range, and and we came out, and I was just thinking about the block I had of, um, earlier that game, and um, that's all I was thinking the whole time as we was lining up, and then they called the timeout, and everybody was like, "TC man, we need another one, man. We need you, man. We need you." And you know, I, I didn't say anything the whole time. I was just quiet the whole time. I was just, I was just looking. Like I actually seen the uh, clip like a while ago, and like they they had it zoomed in on me. But like the whole time, I was just quiet. And I was just looking, like just just kept looking at the clock, looking at the scoreboard and stuff. And so we lined up, and uh, and all I remember is me and Marcel getting a good push, and we actually pushed the guy out the way. And I remember just like throwing my arm up and I felt something hit my arm and I heard the stadium go crazy. And I just took off sprinting down the field man, and I threw my helmet off. And I was like, I can't believe it. I just did. That. What was going on through your mind when you, when you hit it and you took your helmet off running down the field, Kirby was jumping on you. <laughs> I was just, I was, I was in shock, man. I was like, I can't believe I just did that. And that was, really... that was your second one of the, of that game, right? Yep, that was the second one. Dang. So you were just feeling it that day, huh? Yeah, I was on one that day. Well, man, with all the combine stuff going on, the draft is coming up, you know, tons of these guys are meeting with teams and they're doing these pro days and working out and all that. What do you remember about your draft process? Uh, I just remember it being very long. I'm not even going to lie to you. Um, that was a long process. And – not necessarily because, uh, you know, what we had to do. It was just like the days went, they, the days were so long. Like you wouldn't get back to your room at the combine. You wouldn't get back to the room until like 11, 1130 at night and stuff. And then you got to be up super early to, you know, go through the workout and and meet, have meetings again. And then you fly back home after the workout. And... Then after that, you got uh, you got building up to the draft and stuff. You fly out, teams fly you out and stuff to have dinner with the uh, the coaches and um, or the head coach and stuff like that. Then you you know you sit and talk with them the next day after, and then 
either you fly back home or you flying out to another team that's trying to see you before you uh, get back to your final destination. Are and, all these are all these teams basically asking you the same question? Um, they kind of are. They, they it really is. You know, everybody's just trying to pick your pick your brain and stuff just to see where you at, like you know, mentally and all that stuff, and just to see if you know, do you really study the game? So, you know, they ask you all these questions and and situational questions as well and stuff like what would you do if this was to happen in this in this play or this this down and and it's you know it's like third down and such and such to go and stuff to ask you you know what's your mindset what do you think is going going to happen and then if it does happen what are you going to do in that situation and stuff like that so you know it's a bunch of stuff like that and it ended up being a lot of the same questions do you remember any team in particular that may have asked you a question that was kind of off the wall um, I remember me and Ozzy going at it at the combine and stuff. We kind of went back and forth. He asked me a question and stuff. And I, I wouldn't say I got sensitive. It was just like, I was like, damn, man, like what you want me to do? <laughs> Shit. Who, who was this? Rich Eisen, Ozzie you said? Ozzy Newsom. Ozzy Newsom. Okay. Yep. And, um, he'll, he'll tell you about it and he'll tell you about it too and stuff. He asked me, he asked me, um, about after the season, which I had, um, I had hurt my leg in the uh, national championship game, so I ended up gaining like ten pounds over the time I was out, and so I was a little heavy. So he asked me about that, and I was like, "Well, damn, man, like, what you want me to do? I was hurt, shit, fuck." So I was, you know, we kind of went back and forth about that, and I was just like, "Well, damn, I'm I'm three forty, three forty five now. So what 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 you want to say about it now and stuff?" So we, you know, he was like, "Dang, man, I was just asking you a question. And I I didn't think you were gonna get sensitive. I was like, I ain't sensitive, bro. I'm just." Telling you how it is. So after that conversation, did you walk away thinking, man, I'm not going to be a Raven? No, because – and that a lot of people don't know. They they like guys like that, like, you know, guys who uh, – guys who aren't, like, soft, as I would say, and stuff. So they, they like tough guys, like mentally tough guys and right. stuff. And so that I got a backbone and stuff, they, they actually like that. And the fact that I was able to, you know, say it to – Ozzy and stuff, and you know that gave me more. Plus, <laughs> right, right. Well, I'm sure I can ask this question on behalf of a lot of Alabama fans. Where did the nickname Mount Cody come from? Who gave you that nickname? Um, they did. Um, before, um, right when visit, I came for an official visit, and I was walking down the um, walking down the street with one of the other uh, recruits. One night, and uh, I think we walked past uh, Tutwiler or whatever dorm, and it was some guys standing outside. And the guy asked me, he's like, "Hey, is that Mount Cody?" And me and the recruit, we looked at each other. Me and the recruit, we looked at each other, and we was like, "Huh?" He's like, "Yeah, man, you're Mount Cody, right? You're Terrence Cody, right?" And I was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "I don't know who Mount Cody is, though." He was like, "Bro, that's what they're calling you on um." on the recruiting websites and stuff. And I was like, what? And, <laughs> and I ended up signing and coming there and like, it just, it was just there. It just stuck with me. Are you, are you a fan of the, of the nickname? Oh yeah. man. I ended up accepting it and adopting it and stuff. So ended up just fitting me. Well, let's go back to your early days. You, uh, you grew up in Florida and I read that you wore a size 10 shoe when you were eight years old and you were, too big to play the little league football leagues and stuff. What was, what was your plan when you heard that? Um, I mean, it hurt my feelings a lot, you know, cause I always wanted to play football, but I always played sandlot football. So whenever I got a chance to play sandlot football, I made the best of it and stuff. And I, especially chasing down little, little guys that were quicker and faster than me and stuff. And that's, that's how I ended up being so agile at my size because having to chase guys that small. Did did that kind of so, fuel your fire? Like, all right, these people are telling me I'm too big, but I know a couple years from now that size is going to help me for sure. Oh, yeah, man. That, that, at, at first it didn't, but as I got older, it did. It kind of put a lot of fuel in, fuel to my fire and stuff. And once I got to high school and I was able to play, like, it just felt natural to me. Well, when did you realize that, you're pretty good at this football thing. 
Um, I'll probably have to say um my senior year. During going through my senior year, well, become before my senior year, uh, we went through uh went through spring training because I missed out my ju- my sophomore and junior year be- because of grades. So when I was able to get back on the field, um, and it was just like I never left, and and I was just like, damn, I may be really good at this, but my my uh, high school football coach was even more like, you can be playing in the NFL one day, and like. And that 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 dream just became bigger and bigger, you know. Each each step I took closer to getting there. Well, playing off of your senior year, I want to I want to want you to clarify a story for me. I heard that you guys were playing North Fort Myers. You were playing against uh, Noel Devine, who ended up playing running back at West Virginia. And I read that mm-hmm. you hit him so hard that he went to the sideline and started throwing up. Is that true? Yeah, that's a true story. That's what, a true story. What happened? You can actually see it on the clip as well. Well, um, it was uh, it was like a second down play, and um, the the side that he was trying to get to it was clogged up, and he was always known for cutting back and stuff, and and like I was right there on his trail and stuff, and he must not have seen me, so he went to cut back, and I just cleaned him and stuff, and like landed right on top of him, put like all my weight on him, and. And like the next two, three plays, you don't you don't see him on film until he gets back on the field and he breaks off a, a sixty yarder because I wasn't out there. Yeah, Lee. I don't know if anybody else that I've heard of that's made someone throw up hit him so hard. That's that's an honor. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even know he did it until um we watched film and you can see him on the sideline. You can see him on the sideline throwing his head down like like the throwing up gesture. And stuff, and they was like, "Holy shit, man! You you really had him throwing up on the sideline." I was like, "What?" I was so like, you man, I was football, man. <laughs> so y'all was in film, and just someone noticed, dude. Is he throwing up right now? Yeah, actually, people noticed it on the sideline as well. They could, they, uh, my teammates, they ran up to me. It's like, "You knocked Noel Devine out the game. You knocked him out the game." I was like, "Okay, we still got a whole game to go, man." That's funny, man. That's wild. Well, speaking of. Uh, like I said, you're a Florida guy, and coming out of high school, you spent two years at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, um, yep. and then you went to Alabama. This is a little bit of a two-parter. One, coming from Florida, was it always your dream to play for the Florida Gators? And two, how did you end up coming to Alabama? Um, to answer that first one, always been a, um, a Canes fan from from when I started watching football. And still, I still am to this day a Hurricanes fan and stuff. Uh, watching Ed Reed, those guys play back in the days, and you know Sean Taylor was like my favorite player before you know the tragedy happened with them. But I always wanted to go to Miami, and um, and then on the answer to the second part was uh, how I ended up at Bama. I was supposed to sign with Miami, but my coach. My uh, DB's coach, who was uh, who played for Coach Saban and in, in, um, in the NFL for the Jets, I mean for the Cleveland Browns, he played for Coach Saban. He played safety for him, and uh, he got in touch with Coach Saban. He was like, "Hey, I think you need to take a look at this kid we got down here and stuff that'll fit well with your defense and stuff." And he sent some coaches down there to watch me play, and. Uh, and after that, it became just, you know, like, hey, we got to get him in. We got to get him up here. And so I talked to Coach a few times, uh, you know, on the phone and stuff. And then when I got up there for uh, the unofficial visit, I came for uh, the Georgia game. And um, and I talked to him. And, man, like, <laughs> I wanted to play that same day that I talked to him. Like, I don't know what it is that Coach – I don't know what he's – I don't know what it is, man, but he has you ready to – he has you fired up and ready to play every time you talk to him. So you were sold on Bama just as soon as you stepped foot on campus? Exactly. Well, you played in that 09 championship team or a game uh, when they played against Texas. Apart from winning the game, what was your favorite moment of that game? Um, my favorite moment of that game. What's something that sticks out in your mind about that game? Granted, we you know there's a lot of good plays and stuff in that, but I think the best moment is like at the end of the game. Um, that was when I realized like, damn, 
I'm a national champion again because <laughs> I won one in junior college and then they win one at, you know, in D1 and stuff. Like, I was just like, damn, like, I did it again. <laughs> that was what I was about to ask you, too, was you won a championship, you know, JUCO, Alabama, and you won a Super Bowl. Not many people have won, you know, three rings at three different levels. What does that mean to you? Man, that meant a lot. That means a lot to me, and it still does because, like, not a lot of, like you said, not a lot of people has done that, and a lot of people wish they've done that. Only ring I'm missing is a high school ring and stuff, so hopefully I can get one through coaching these guys up here and stuff. But, um, man, like, that's that's the biggest – that's, like, one of the biggest accomplishments – in my um, in my career is having a ring in each level that I played at, and it's just and like that stuff means a lot to me. I mean, the experience in the Super Bowl, you know, just playing in a game that we all dream about, you know, playing in, you know, what was that like? The experience because you were playing in New Orleans when you guys beat the 49ers. and wasn't there a power outage in the middle of the game? Yeah, it was definitely a power outage. The power was out for like an hour or so. Yeah, the power was out for like it was out for like an hour or so. Oh man, all these cars coming by. But um, the power was out for like an hour or so, and right after we got a sack on um, Colin Kaepernick and stuff, and we were up by like three touchdowns and stuff, and it was just that whole moment. Like it was like, man, like oh, how does this happen in the Super Bowl? All this money, this they, <laughs> all this money they pay get paid to do do this for and said all this stuff and I was just like wow but being in that being in that game like you know just it gave me goosebumps like the whole entire time we were up there I was just I, I just randomly got goosebumps because I'm like geez I'm about to play in the Super Bowl it's like something like I watched every year growing up and playing video games on the Super Bowl getting getting my team to the Super Bowl all that stuff so it was like a, all that stuff was like a dream come true. Absolutely. That's awesome. Well, man, I appreciate you taking the time to chat some ball with me. Good luck uh, coaching them Dora Bulldogs. All right, man. I appreciate you having me on, man.